So I started thinking, you know, could this of epidemic of high blood pressure and obesity and diabetes be related to uric acid? And what, what, and what I found was that this epidemic of obesity, although everyone had talked about it as starting in the 1970s, you could trace it back to 1890. That's right around 1890 was the turning point. The, I call it the tipping point. The obesity was seen in about um, 2 to 3 percent of people in, 19, in 1890, and it was already rising by 1905, 1920, 1940. And the same thing was true for diabetes. It was, diabetes was like two cases per 100,000 people in 1890. That's what, you know, um, Sir William Osler wrote, wrote in his textbook. And, and then it continued, started to increase dramatically into the 20s and the 40s and the 50s. And the same thing was true for high blood pressure. High blood pressure was actually rare back in 1905. And Janeway, who studied this, you know, 500 people said there was only like 3 to 5% of people had high blood pressure back then. And so there was this real dramatic rise over the last century. And I started looking at uric acid levels, and they also turned out, you know, the right. trouble was there was different assays way right. back when. But in the, around 1920, they started measuring it. And then the, the, a new assay came up in 1930, and that assay actually... Was, has been used routinely since then. And it's very easy to show that uric acid levels went from about 3 milligrams percent in 1920 to an average of like 5.5 or 6 milligrams percent like now. So it's been going up. So then the question is, why is the uric acid going up? Is it, is it because it's going up because of obesity and diabetes and high blood pressure, or is it going up uh, because of something else. And, you know, the big thing that controls uric acid, one of the major uh, controllers, is diet. So, uh, you know, I immediately thought, ah, it's going to be purines. It's going to be, we've all been told that, uh, you know, when I was in medical school, they said, well, you know, uric acid is driven by purines, high purine diets. So things like beer, which has yeast in the beer and red meats and, and things like this should be the primary driver. But when I looked, the red meat intake was actually flat or actually tended to go down a little bit uh, depending upon which decade. I mean, it did not correlate at all. But I was aware, I'm as you are, that, uh, that sugar, in, yes, sugar and particularly fructose, the component of table sugar, um, can raise uric acid. And, you know, it was known by Osler. Osler knew that sugar raised uric acid. He said, avoid sweets if you have gout. This is like 1890. People were writing about it, but, you know, it kind of fell off the map and everybody was thinking it was purines when I was around doing this. And, and, and so the idea, you know, the thought was that maybe this could it be fructose. Could it be sugar? So I decided to do an experiment. And um, I gave sugar, um, actually it was done by Taka Nakagawa in our group. Uh, he was a Japanese visiting scientist. And he gave sugar to, to rats. And, you know, over time, and he gave fructose to rats. And over time, they became uh, obese and um, pre-diabetic, and they developed metabolic syndrome, but their blood pressure went up. And the original theory, David, was that we were going to lower the blood pressure, and that was the reason for this epidemic of high blood pressure. But what we found is that when we lowered the, ur the, uh, the uric acid, the blood pressure improved. But guess what? The triglycerides were, were less in the blood. The insulin levels came down. The glucose levels were less. The, the fat in the liver was less. The, and even the weight gain was, was affected to, in the first study, not so much, but in the subsequent studies, yes. And, uh, and so we realized that when we were lowering uric acid, we weren't just improving blood pressure. We were like improving the metabolic syndrome. And what's more, as I looked at it, I became convinced that fructose and, and sugar was like the main driver of obesity. And this was like 2003. There weren't many people looking at it back then. 